Representation Theory of Finite Groups, Lecture 16, The Branching Rule. Let us start with our setup. Let n be a positive integer and lambda a partition of n. We view lambda as the corresponding Young diagram. Consider the set of all Young tabloids of shape lambda, denoted ytd of lambda. The linearization of the action of the symmetric group on this set is called the permutation module for lambda and denoted m upper lambda. The permutation module m upper lambda has the Specht submodule denoted s upper lambda, and we know that this Specht submodule is a simple SN module. We also know that the set of all Specht modules s upper lambda where lambda runs through all partitions of n, is a complete and irredundant set of simple Sn modules. Consider the set Syt sub lambda of all standard Young tableaus of shape lambda. Last time, we proved that the set of all polytabloids Et indexed by standard Young tableaus T of shape lambda is a basis of the Specht module S lambda. And this basis is called the standard basis of the Specht module. Let us now describe how elementary transpositions act on the elements of this standard basis. Consider the elementary transposition in Sn, which swaps the elements i and i plus 1. So i is an element between 1 and n minus 1. Let T be a standard Young tableau of shape lambda. So, how can we understand the action of this transposition on the standard basis element E sub t? We have to consider several cases. Case 1. Assume that the elements i and i plus 1 belong to the same column of t. In other words, the transposition of i and i plus 1 is an element in the column stabilizer of t. Since this is an odd element, we know that applying an element from the column stabilizer to Et, we should just multiply Et by its sign. So therefore, the transposition of i and i plus 1 applied to Et in this case produces minus Et. Case 2. Assume that i and i plus 1 are neither in the same column nor in the same row of t. In this case, Swapping i and i plus 1 in t, we get again a standard Young tableau, because we cannot change the fact that rows and columns are increasing. Therefore, the polytabloid E, indexed by the standard Young tableau obtained from t by swapping i and i plus 1, is again an element of the standard basis. So, in other words, applying the transposition of i and i plus 1 to et in this case, we get the standard basis element indexed by the standard Young tableau i i plus 1 applied to t. And here is the most complicated case 3. So, assume that i and i plus 1 are in the same row of t. In this case, if we apply the transposition of i and i plus 1 to t, we obtain a tableau which has a row descent, so in some row, uh, namely in the row which contains both i and i plus 1, the i plus 1 will come before i. This is because it comes after i before we swap them, so after swapping, i plus 1 comes before i. In this case, as we saw last time from the proof of the basis theorem, we need to apply Garnier elements, possibly inductively, to this situation in order to resolve all possible row descents which might appear during the inductive process. In other words, in this case, we can write the image of Et under the transposition of i and i plus 1 as a linear combination of the elements of the standard basis. So after this recursive application of the Garnier relation. Observe that application of the Garnier relation produces linear combination with integer coefficients by construction. And so in this case 3, we can only say that we can write this 
image of ET under the transposition of I and I plus 1 as a linear combination of standard basis elements with some integer coefficients, without explicitly specifying what these coefficients are. The action of the symmetric group on S lambda in the standard basis is usually called Young's natural representation. And one immediate corollary from this is that all characters of the symmetric group are integer valued functions. Proof? From Young's natural representation, we have just discussed that the characters of all simple modules of Sn are integer valued functions. And since all characters are integral combinations of simple characters, the claim of the corollary follows. Let us now consider an explicit example of the symmetric group S4. So we will explicitly construct all Specht modules for S4 and compute the action of the elementary transpositions in S4 on the standard basis elements of these Specht modules. So there are five partitions of four. So the partition four, the partition three one, the partition two two, the partition two one one, and the partition one 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 one. And the elementary transpositions in S4 are one two, two three, and three four. So we will compute the matrices representing the action of these elementary transpositions in the standard basis of each Specht module. Let us start with the Specht module for partition 4. So we know that this module is isomorphic to the trivial Sn module. We have one standard Young tableau for the partition 4, namely the line with elements 1, 2, 3, and 4 written in the natural order. So the standard basis of S upper 4 consists of the polytabloid for this unique standard Young tableau of shape 4. And the matrix of the action of any element in S4, and in particular of all our elementary transpositions in this basis, is just the identity matrix of size 1 times 1, because we know that this is the trivial Sn module. So the next Specht module will be the Specht module for the partition 1, 1, 1, 1. We know that this Specht module is exactly the sign Sn module. So the set of standard Young tableaus for this partition again consists of one element, and this is a column where 1, 2, 3, and 4 are written in the natural order. So the standard basis of the Specht module consists of one polytabloid, which corresponds to this unique standard Young tableau of this shape. And since all elementary transpositions are odd elements, the matrices of their action in the standard basis, they all are the same, and this is minus the identity matrix of the size 1 times 1. So the next Specht module will be the Specht module for the partition 3, 1. There are three standard Young tableaus of this shape. The Young tableau which has 1, 3, and 4 in the first line and 2 in the second line, the Young tableau which has 1, 2, and 4 in the first line and 3 in the second line, and the Young tableau which has 1, 2, and 3 in the first line and 4 in the second line. So the standard basis of the Specht module consists of three polytabloids which correspond to these standard Young tableaus. And here are the matrices of the action of the elementary transpositions in the standard basis. The matrices of the action of 2, 3 and 3, 4 are fairly easy to compute. So 2, 3 swaps 2 and 3, and in the first two standard Young tableaus, these stand in different rows and columns. So this means that swapping 2 and 3 just maps the first polytabloid to the second one and back. In the third standard Young tableau, 2 and 3 stay in the same row. So we need to apply the Garnier element. But there is nothing else in their column. So this is a row, this is the first row, and these are the only elements in the corresponding columns. So the application of the Garnier element is very easy and just gives back the original tableau which you started from. So which means that the transposition of two and three actually preserves the third 
polytabloid. And by exactly the same reasoning, the transposition of three and four preserves the first polytabloid and swaps the second and the third. So the metrics for the transposition of one and two is a little bit more complicated. So for the first tableau, one and two belongs to the column stabilizer. So it just gives us this tableau with the sign. And in the two other cases, we need to do the Garnier element computation. So here is a Garnier element computation. So first of all, this is a repetition of the Garnier element computation for two, three. So two and three swaps two and three in the first row, and then the computation of the Garnier element just swaps them back. And similarly for three and four. So this is the easy part. Now the difficult part. If we apply the transposition of one and two to one, two, four, and three in the second row, we will get the tableau which has two, one, four in the first row and then three in the second row. So we need to apply the Garnier element procedure to one, two, and three. Applying it, we swap them back with coefficient plus one, and then we get the additional tableau one, three, four, and two with the coefficient minus. And we have a similar computation when we apply one, two to the tableau one, two, three, and four. It's exactly the same, but just up to swapping four and three. So we first swap to one in the first row, and then we apply the Garnier element to the first and the second column, which gives us exactly the same answer as before, up to swapping four and three. And now we see that here, the tableau which appears with a minus sign is one, four, three, and then two in the second column. So here four and three in the first row are in the wrong order, but we can apply the Garnier element to them again, and this just swaps them. This means that the matrix of the transposition one, two in the standard basis is a matrix where the first line consists of minus ones, and then we have 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. So this completes the description of the Specht module S3, 1. Next, let us look at the Specht module S211. So there are three standard Young tableaus of this shape. So the standard Young tableaus 1, 2, 3, 4, then 1, 3, 2, 4, and 1, 4, 2. Three. So the standard basis consists of the polytabloids indexed by these standard Young tableaus. And here are the matrices of the action of the elementary transpositions in the standard basis. Again, the matrices of the action of the transpositions to 3 and 3, 4 are easy to compute. So we see, for example, that 2, 3 swaps in the first tableau to elements which are neither in the same row nor in the same column. So we just get the second tableau. So on the basis of polytabloids, the corresponding polytabloids are swapped. And in the last tableau, 2, 3 belongs to the column stabilizer, so we get the same tableau with a minus sign. And similarly for 3, 4. So 3, 4 is in the column stabilizer of the first tableau, and it swaps the second and the third tableaus. So these two matrices are easy to compute. So for 1, 2, we now have the situation which is slightly easier. 1, 2 is in the column stabilizer of the second and the third tableaus. So we have only minus ones on the diagonals for the corresponding columns. Well, in the first tableau, 1 and 2 are in the same row. So we need to do the Garnier computation. Applying 1, 2 to the polytabloid for the first tableau, we get the polytabloid for the tableau when we swap one and two. Here we have the row descent to one. And so we need to apply the Garnier element to the whole one, two, three, four thing. And then application of the Garnier element gives us, so first of all, we swap one and two back. Then we have the element one, three, two, four, which we get when we put three in the second column. So here the sign is minus because the corresponding element in, in the Garnier sum is a three cycle. So three cycle comes with a sum plus, but since we move it to the other side uh, in the Garnier relation, the sign is minus. 
And finally, the final element, we will also have 1, 4, 2, 3, which comes from the fourth cycle. Fourth cycle is minus, but moving to the other side gives us this plus. So the first column is 1 minus 1, 1. So here is the Garnier element itself. So it's identity minus transposition of 1 and 2. So this is minus sign on the other side gives us plus sign here. Then plus 1, 3, 2, the long cycle. This plus gives us this minus because it's moved to the other side. And this minus gives this plus for the fourth cycle. And here is the final Specht module S22. There are two standard Young tableaus of shape 22. The first one is 1, 2 and 3, 4. And the second one is 1, 3 and 2, 4. So the standard basis of the Specht module is indexed by the two poly tabloids corresponding to these standard Young tableaus. And here are the matrices of the action of our elements in the standard basis. The action of the transposition to 3 is the easiest one because it swaps two elements which are not in the same row and column. It swaps the two tableaus, so the matrix is 0, 1, 1, 0. The element 1, 2 is in the column stabilizer of the second tableau, so the second column is 0, minus 1, and the first column requires a Garnier computation. Similarly, 3, 4. 3, 4 is in the column stabilizer of the Second tableau, so the second column is 0, minus 1. And the first for the first element, the first column requires Garnier computation. So here are Garnier computations. Applying 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4 gives us 2, 1, 3, 4. So we need to do the Garnier computation for 1, 2, and 3. So when we can swap them to get 1, 2, 3, 4, and additionally we get 1, 3, 2. And here, this was a three cycle. The original sign is plus. Moving to the other side gives minus. And the computation for three, four is exactly the same. So applying three, four to one, two, three, four gives us one, two, four, three. So we do, we need to do the Garnier for two, three, and four. So we can swap three and four back with a sign plus. And then we can additionally have three. 1, 3, 2, 4, with a sign minus. And this completes our explicit S4 example. Now we can talk about the branching rule, and let us start with the formulation of the problem. We start with the observation that the symmetric group Sn minus 1 is naturally a subgroup of Sn. If we identify Sn minus 1, with a set of all elements of Sn, which fix n. So now if we take it for all n, we actually have an increasing flag of groups. So S0 is a subgroup of S1, this is a subgroup of S2, and so on. And looking at this flag, we have the natural problem. Given an Sn minus 1 module M, we want to understand the Sn module obtained from M by inducing it up. To Sn. And the dual natural problem given an Sn module n, we want to understand the Sn minus 1 module obtained by restricting n down to Sn minus 1. By general theory, because we know that everything is completely reducible, we can restrict the problem to the study of Specht modules. And so the branching problem is for any partition lambda of n, and any partition mu of n minus 1, determine the multiplicity of s mu in the restriction of s lambda from sn to sn minus 1. Or, dually, for any partition lambda of n and any partition mu of n minus 1, determine the multiplicity of s lambda in the module, which is obtained by inducing s mu from s n minus 1 up to sn. In order to formulate the answer, we need to introduce some combinatorial tools. Let lambda be a Young diagram. A node of lambda is called removable, provided that, after removing this node, the outcome is a Young diagram again. As an example, consider the Young diagram corresponding to the partition 4, 4, 3, 3, 3, 1. So here it is. So on this diagram, all removable nodes are 
colored in magenta color. So we have three removable nodes. So if we remove this node, the outcome is a Young diagram of the partition 4, 3, 3, 3, 3, 1. If you remove this node, we get 4, 4, 3, 3, 2, 1. If you remove this node, we will get 4, 4, 3, 3, 3. So this Young diagram has exactly three removable nodes. And what we can easily observe is the following. A removable node is always the rightmost node of the row, and it is always the lowest node of a column. And some row has a removable node if and only if the row below is strictly shorter, because we need to remove this node and get a Young diagram of a partition. And similarly, a column has a removable node if and only if the column to the right is strictly shorter. Okay, let us denote by mu right arrow lambda the fact that mu is obtained from lambda by removing a removable node. A remark, if lambda was a partition of n and mu right arrow lambda, then mu is a partition of n minus 1. And vice versa, if mu is a partition of n minus 1 and mu right arrow lambda, then lambda is a partition of n. So now, the first part of the main theorem, branching rule for restrictions. For any partition lambda of n, there is an isomorphism of Sn minus 1 modules as follows. If we restrict the Specht module S lambda from Sn to Sn minus 1, this is isomorphic to the direct sum of all Specht modules S mu, taking over all mu such that mu right arrow lambda. And note that all multiplicities here are 1. Okay, so let us try to prove this theorem. Fix a partition lambda of n. Lemma, for any standard Young tableau of shape lambda, the box which is marked with n in this standard Young tableau is removable. Proof. So since T is standard, n must be the rightmost box in its row, because n is a maximal element. Further, since T is standard, the box below n cannot be a box of the diagram, because n is a maximal element and below should have a mark which is greater than n, which is not possible. So this means that the next row of our diagram is strictly shorter. And then, from our observations before, we see that n is a removable box. So now let us introduce the following notation. Let s be a removable node of lambda. Let us denote by mu s the Young tableau, which is obtained from lambda by removing s. And let us also denote by syt lambda, comma s the set of all standard Young tableaus of shape lambda in which n occupies the removable node S. In particular, directly from the definitions, we get that the set of all standard Young tableaus of shape lambda is a disjoint union taking all, over all removable nodes S of lambda of the sets S y t sub lambda comma S. So this is because n is in one of the removable nodes. Okay, so this allows us to do some matching of the bases. So for any removable known S, adding the box with N at this removable node defines a bijection which we denote by eta S from the set of all standard Young tableaus of shape mu S to the set of all standard Young tableaus of shape lambda where N stays in the node S. In particular, it follows that the dimension of S lambda, by the previous formula, this is a cardinality of the set of all standard Young tableaus, is equal to the sum of the dimensions of S mu S over all removable nodes S of lambda. Let us define a linear map, which we denote by phi sub S, from the Specht module for the partition mu S to the Specht module S lambda, 
in the following way. So phi s sends the poly tabloid ET, so here T is a standard Young tableau of shape mu s, to the poly tabloid E indexed by eta s of T. So now eta s of T is a standard Young tableau of shape lambda, where n stays in the removable node s. This is well defined as a linear map since the set of all poly tabloids indexed by standard Young tableaus of shape mu s is a basis of the corresponding Specht module. Let us now order the removable boxes in lambda increasingly according to the number of the row in which they appear. So in our example of the partition 443332, it has three removable nodes. So the removable node S1 is the one which appears in the second row. The removable node S2 is the one which appears in the fifth row. And the removable node S3 is the one which appears in the sixth row. So the higher the number of the row in which the node appears, the higher is the index of our node. Now, let us denote by m sub i the direct sum of the images of all linear maps phi s1, phi s2, and so on, phi s i, in the Specht module S, lambda. Lemma, two claims. Claim number one, each m i is an s n minus one submodule of S lambda. Claim two, the map phi s i overlined, so this one is the map from the Specht module for mu s i to the quotient of m i modulo m i minus 1 is a homomorphism of s n minus 1 modules. Proof. So we compare the action of the elementary transpositions from the group s n minus 1 on the poly tabloids for the Specht module S mu S sub i and the corresponding poly tabloids in S lambda. And we use Young's natural representation for this. So if we swap two elements in the same column, we will get, of course, minus in both cases. So this agrees. Swapping two elements which are neither in the same column nor in the same row We'll just get a new standard basis elements, and again, in both cases, the outcome agrees. The problem appears if we swap two elements in the same row, because then we need to use Garnier elements. If, when we use Garnier elements, the box which contains n is never moved, then the two processes for Sn minus 1 and Sn obviously coincide. So the really problematic case is the case when during the Garnier application, the box which contains n is displaced. But when we do the Garnier computation, when we displace a box, we displace it to the right. And when we displace the box which contains n to the right, it ends up in a removable node with a strictly smaller index which means that it ends up in m sub i minus 1. And this is killed during this process. And so this means that if you can consider the quotient of m i modulo m i minus 1, the corresponding phi s i overlined will really be a homomorphism of s n minus 1 modules. And hence, the whole proof follows by induction. So now we are ready to prove the branching rule for restriction. So from the previous lemma, we see that we have already constructed a filtration of S lambda by S n minus 1 submodules. So we have 0, which is a submodule of M1. This is a submodule of M2, and so on. So each quotient M i over M i minus 1 is isomorphic to the Specht module S mu sub S i. So therefore, each of these Specht modules, each S mu sub S i, is an S n minus 1 submodule of S lambda. So this is simply due to complete reducibility. All these submodules, Specht modules for mu S i, they all are simple and they all are pairwise non-isomorphic because they correspond to different partitions of n minus 1. 
The force there sum inside S lambda is a direct sum. And since we already know that the dimension of S lambda is equal to the sum of dimensions of these Specht modules S mu S, it follows that this direct sum coincides with the whole of S lambda. And this proves our branching rule. Let us do some examples. Example one, if we take the partition N of N, this is just one line, and it has only one removable node, which is the rightmost node. If you remove it, we will get the partition n minus 1 of n minus 1. And we, of course, know that the partition n corresponds to the trivial module. If you restrict the trivial module to a subgroup, you will get just a trivial module for the subgroup. So this fits nicely in our branching rule. Similarly, the partition 1 to the power n of n has only one removable node, namely the lowest node in the column. Removing this node gives the partition 1 to the power n minus 1 of n minus 1, and this corresponds to the fact that restricting the sine module from Sn to Sn minus 1, we just get the sine module. And here is a less trivial example. If you consider the partition n minus 1 comma 1 of n, and assume that n is greater than 2, to avoid any of the previous examples, then we see that this partition has exactly two removable nodes, one in the first row and the second one in the second row. So re removing the removable node in the first row gives the partition n minus 2 comma 1 of n minus 1. Removing the removable node in the second row gives the partition n minus 1 of n minus 1. And we have already seen that restricting from Sn to Sn minus 1, the Specht module Sn minus 1, 1 is isomorphic to the direct sum of the trivial module Sn minus 1 and the Specht module Sn minus 2, 1. So here is a concrete explanation how this works. The standard basis of Sn minus 1, 1, as we saw, is given by the polytabloids J minus 1. So J is a tabloid where the element J is in the second column. And 1 is a tabloid where the element 1 is in the second column. And here, and here J is an element between 2 and N. So if you consider the elements here, but restrict that J is between 2 and N minus 1, this obviously gives a copy of the Specht module S n minus 2, 1, just on the nodes. For any complex number x, the element x times the tabloid n minus the sum of the tabloids 1, 2, and so on, n minus 1, of course generates a trivial S n minus 1 module. So the S n minus 1 acts trivially here because it just permutes these 1, 2, and so on, and they come with the same coefficients. And it is easier to find a complex number x, which is non-zero, such that x times n minus 1 minus 2 and so on is a linear combination of the standard basis elements. In other words, this gives us a copy of the trivial module inside the restriction of s n minus 1 comma 1 to s n minus 1. In order to be able to talk about the second part of the branching rule, we need to talk about insertable nodes. Let lambda be a Young diagram. Definition, a node of the positive quadrant of our two-dimensional space, but outside lambda is insertable, provided that after adjoining this node to lambda, we get a Young diagram. So here is an example. Consider the partition 4331, which is given here in the violet color. So the violet part here is 4331. So this partition has four insertable nodes. We can insert this node into the first row of this partition, this node into the second row, this node into the fourth row, or this node into the fifth row. So the insertable nodes are given in magenta. Here are some observations. An insertable node is always next to the rightmost node of some row of our partition. Similarly, an insertable node is always below the lowest node of a column. 
The first row of any Young diagram always has an insertable node. And a row which is not the first row has an insertable node if and only if the row just above it is strictly longer. Similarly, the first column always has an insertable node, and the column which is not the first column has an insertable node if and only if the previous one, so the column to the left, is strictly longer. So now we can formulate and prove the second part of the branching rule, and this is a branching rule for induction. Theorem, for any partition mu of n minus 1, there is an isomorphism of Sn modules as follows. Induction from Sn minus 1 to Sn of the Specht module S mu is isomorphic to the direct sum of the Specht modules S lambda taken over all lambda such that mu right arrow lambda. Proof. Observe that lambda is obtained from mu by inserting an insertable node is an equivalent condition to the condition that mu is obtained from lambda by removing a removable node. In other words, the notation mu right arrow lambda can be interpreted as any of these two equivalent conditions. By Frobenius reciprocity, as lambda appears in the induction from Sn minus 1 to Sn of some Specht module S mu, with the same multiplicity with which S mu appears in the restriction of S lambda from Sn to Sn minus 1. So putting these things together, we see that the second part of the branching rule follows directly from the first part of the branching rule, namely from the branching rule for restriction. Here is an example. Consider the partition n minus 1 of n minus 1. So this is given here in violet. So this partition has two insertable nodes, namely one node in the first row and one node in the first column. So this means that the induction from Sn minus 1 to Sn of the Specht module S indexed by the partition n minus 1 decomposes as the direct sum of the Specht module for the partition n. This we obtain if we insert the node in the first row. Direct sum with the Specht module for the partition n minus 1, comma 1. This we obtain if we insert the node in the second row. Recall that the Specht module for n minus 1 is just a trivial s minus 1 module and also that the symmetric group for n minus 1 can be also considered as the subgroup which permutes elements between 1 and n minus 1 and fixes the element n. So therefore, the induction from Sn minus 1 to Sn of the Specht module Sn minus 1 is the same as inducing the trivial module but the induced trivial module is isomorphic to the permutation module for this Young subgroup. So this is exactly the permutation module M with the index n minus 1, comma 1. And we have already seen that this permutation module is actually the natural module for Sn, and it decomposes as a trivial module plus the Specht module for the partition n minus 1, comma 1. So which completely agrees which was our theorem from the previous slide. Okay, let us finish with some problems and questions. Question one, assume that T is a standard Young tableau of shape lambda and that it contains the following part. So it contains the two times two box inside with A, B, C, and D as a part. Compute what happens if we apply the transposition of B and C to the polytabloid E sub T. Question two, compute the action of the generating simple reflections of S6 in the standard basis of the Specht module S222. Question three, prove that a node is removable if and only if it is the rightmost node of some row and the lowest node of some column. Question four, check with all details that for any removable node S of a partition lambda 
which is a partition of some n. Adding n at this node defines a bijection between the set of standard Young tableaus for the partition mu sub s of n minus 1 to the set of all standard Young tableaus for the partition lambda, where n is in s. And question 5. Find x a non-zero complex number such that the element x times the tabloid n and then minus the tabloid 1, minus the tabloid 2, and so on, is a linear combination of the elements of the standard basis of the Specht module. Thank you very much, and see you next time.